Hello, and welcome to another new video from BradleySediograph.com. In this video, we're going to go over the weights for the Advanced Astro Indicator. So the weights, they basically allow us to take different cuts of the data to try to come up with the most accurate indicator possible. So let's talk about how to take advantage of this additional functionality, which is already included in the Advanced Astro Dashboard. So if you've downloaded the Advanced Astro Dashboard, whether you have the free trial version or if you have the full version, you'll notice that if you go to the section on the right where it says Advanced Astro, if you click on the cell right below it, a little arrow pops up to the right and you'll see that there's a drop down box. So if we click on that arrow, you'll see that there are several options here. If we go to the top of the drop down box list, you'll see that the first option is to include all weights. The next option is to include no opposite weights. The next one is no planets beyond Saturn. So let's talk about what these mean. What are these various uh, cuts of the weights? So let's first start by talking about what the different items are that we use to come up with the advanced astro indicator. So what we did was the overall process, and you probably have heard this before if you've watched a couple of the other videos. For each security, we looked at all of the security data that was available from the first data points that we could find all the way through the end of 2014. And we said for each planetary aspect and declination, we said, what was the historical correlation of that event with the securities price? So for example, for a conjunction aspect between Mercury and Pluto, the market has typically exhibited a slight amount of weakness when that aspect has taken place. Whereas when Mars and Saturn have had a conjunction, there's typically been a much larger uh, amount of market weakness that's taken place. So that's how we came up with the overall weights. And that was an interesting advance as compared to the Bradley Sedera graph, because these weights are based upon the actual historical relationships between these planetary aspects and declinations and the historical security price for each security that was tested. It's great that we have these weights, but one thing that we might want to think about is how do we know which weights we should include? So for example, are the planets that are closer to Earth and the Sun, are those more relevant to stock prices? Or would planets that are larger, such as Saturn, be more relevant? Saturn is a much larger planet, but it's also much farther away. So which one should we give more weight? Should we give more weight to these planets here? Should we give more weights to these planets here? Or for the north node aspects, so aspects with the moon's north node and the declinations, should we even include these? So some people might say that, yes, you should include the moon's north node. If you read books such as those by Louise McWhorter, uh, it looks like it's an important factor to take into account. But some people might say that, hey, the moon's north node is important or it isn't. Uh, same thing with the declinations. So it would have been the easiest if I simply said, okay, let's take what all of these weights are and let's simply use all the weights and call it a day. But even though it took much, much longer, what I decided to do was to include multiple cuts of the weights. So instead of just being able to say, okay, here's the advanced astro indicator, there's only one indicator, and it's going to include all the weights, I decided to instead include additional functionality so that you could decide which ones you wanted to include. So for example, if you don't want to include declinations and you want to include all the weights, aside from that, there's an option for that. If you want to show just the moon's north node aspects, or if you want to leave out that north node aspects, there is an option to do that as well. So let's talk about what those options are. So this is a PDF file, and it basically shows which weights were included or excluded for each set. So if you go back to the Excel file that we were looking at originally, so this is the advanced astro dashboard, you'll see that the first option was to include all weights. The second option was to include no opposite weights, no planets beyond Saturn, and so on and so forth. So this PDF file shows you what is included for each of these. So for example, the one that we're looking at right now for the S&P 500 is the one that says no planets beyond Saturn. So if we go to the PDF file, we can scroll down until we find that no planets beyond Saturn. So that would be this one here. So what this is doing is it's basically saying, let's exclude anything having to do with planets beyond Saturn. So that would be uh, Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto. So these first three planetary aspects, they include those three farthest planets, so they're excluded. And you can see as you scroll down here, anything having to do with Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, uh, that would be excluded. Declinations, uh, the moon's north node, long terms, and middle terms. So what would be the thought process for this? So 
One thing that it could be is because these planets are so far away, maybe they have less of an impact here on Earth. So that could be one of the possible rationales. But instead of simply speculating, I thought it was important to do something that was more quantitative to be able to actually get a better sense for something that's supportable as compared to something that's just speculation. So, you know, people could speculate, you know, which planets have more or less of an influence, but I'm personally more interested in finding out historically what have been the correlations between various planets and various securities. So to do that, you can see that there are various cuts of the weights. So everything from all the weights included to declinations only being excluded. So the one that says no declinations, that, that simply means that that's left out. The declinations are left out. No north node aspects. That would mean that all aspects between the moon's north node are left out. So these all have various different uh, things that are included or excluded. Here's the one thing that I'll point out because it's a little bit less intuitive. So if you look over here, let's go to the this one right here, the one that says no opposite weights. So if you look to historical documents that talk about uh, astrology, they talk about how sextile aspects are typically favorable or positive aspects, and so are trine aspects, whereas square aspects and opposition aspects are typically thought to be negative. So what this option does where it says no opposite weights, that basically says if you see a positive weight for a sextile, include that because sextiles are, are thought to be positive. And then for squares, if you see a negative weight, keep that in there because squares are thought to be negative. So if you have a weight that is positive, that would be left out. Because if you have a positive weight, some people might say, well, you shouldn't really include a weight that's positive because squares are thought to be negative. So why would you have the indicator go up when in reality squares are supposed to be negative? So this was simply one other way to, uh, to cut the weights to try to come up with different options. And if you've watched some of the other videos uh, that I put out, you'll see that it's a little bit more complex than that. It's not as simple as uh, sextiles and trines being positive and squares and oppositions being negative. But I thought it was important to include this just as one additional data point that we could use to try to come up with the best type of analysis possible. So now that we've talked about overall the, uh, the structure as far as what the weights are that are included or excluded, let's go back to briefly touch on the actual historical results. So if you take a look at the historical correlation analysis between these various indicators and the securities that we tested, you can take a look to see which ones typically tended to work the best. So for all of the different cuts of the weights, uh, I would say the Bradley Sedera graph and the long terms and declinations, they actually did very well on the tests. But for the advanced astro weights, the one that seemed to do relatively well was the advanced astro long-term weights with no opposites. So this would be all the weights for the long-term planets. Let's go take a look at what that would be. So that would be this one right here where it says long terms only and no opposites. So it only includes weights for long terms if they are sextiles that are positive, squares that are negative, trines that are positive, or oppositions that are negative. And for conjunctions, those would all be included. So this is the set of weights that seem to do relatively well for the securities that were tested. I think there are approximately 60 securities that were tested. So let's go to see what the results were. So you can see that for the advanced astro long terms with no opposites, on average, it had a correlation a mean, you know, a mean average of 26% and it had a median correlation of 40%. So that means if you took the securities and you took the middle one, the middle correlation was 40% and then the average was 26. And then overall, 75% of the securities had a positive correlation. So that meant that only 25% had a negative correlation with this indicator and 75% of the time there was a positive correlation. And this was for the year 2015. All of this analysis is simply uh, taking data that we used through the end of 2014 and then projecting out for 2015 onwards. And for the year 2015, here's what the results look like for the 60 securities that were tested. So for the S&P 500, let's talk about why we are using no planets beyond Saturn. So you might go back to this website, uh, the historical correlation page and say, 
Well, if overall for all the securities, the advanced astro long terms and no opposites tended to work the best overall, why would we be using the no planets beyond Saturn for the S&P 500? So the, the thing is you can use whichever ones you think are appropriate. And I included the weight that I thought was a reasonable one to include. And the way I came to that conclusion was uh, if you look at the, so this page right here shows the the details of the correlations. I know that this might be difficult to read, so I'm going to explain what's on this page. So if you look for, look to the S&P 500, which that's the one that's down here. If you go up to where it says uh, no planets beyond Saturn, you can see that for the year 2015, uh, 40, there's a 44% correlation, which was the highest among the advanced astro indicator weights. And I know that that was small. You may, may not have been able to see that in the video. But overall, for the S&P 500 for 2015, the no planets beyond Saturn, that had a the highest correlation for all of the advanced astro weights. And then sure enough, once we get into the year 2016, that correlation uh, seems to be continuing. So you'll see that when the indicator bottomed right here, the S&P 500 also tended to bottom at that same point in time. And the indicator has increased, and at the same time, the S&P 500 has increased. So it's important that we don't uh, confuse correlation and causation. So this is a relatively new indicator. So obviously past performance is no uh, guarantee of future results. Uh, who knows what's going to happen in the future, but I'm pretty excited about um, how well this seems to be working so far. But let's say that you wanted to include a different set of weights. You could go to this drop-down box and you could choose, if you wanted to, all weights. And this would show you what the indicator would look like if you included all the weights for the S&P 500, including middle terms, long terms, the aspects within Moon's North node, as well as declinations. If you wanted to include the one that we talked about earlier, the one that did relatively well for most securities, that would be the long terms and no opposites. You'll see what the indicator looks like. So let's scale the indicator just so it's a little bit easier to read. So we'll put a maximum of 35. Okay, so you can see that this one doesn't seem to be quite as relevant for the S&P 500. It just doesn't seem to uh, be quite as good for the S&P 500. But some of the other ones, such as the No Planets Beyond Saturn, this one seems to be a good indicator for the year 2015. And for 2016, it seems to be doing pretty well uh, so far. So that's a description of what you can do with this drop-down box right here to be able to see different cuts of the weights. And there's a PDF file that I just uploaded to the website that you can download. That's this PDF file right here that you can use to take a look to see which weights are included for each of these items in the drop-down box. So I hope you found this video to be useful and thanks for watching.